Welcome back. Another exciting day at the office. This, I'm happy, works properly. So, I've got to get that sent off to Erin, the US truck driver who is steampunking her cab. Um, ASAP. That's exciting. So, I'm getting on with that. In fact, huge boxes and slightly different shape boxes that I'm rearranging in order to fit that in. And, of course, there's the D mat lever. For the TARDIS, which oh, I just can't stop doing. I have to every time I walk past, I have to come over and just mm, look at all the gears. It's a very satisfying thing to move. Anyway, going to stick glue some little LEDs along the bottom of the transparent parts on the, either side, because as it's engraved with the Gallifreyan text images, it'll glow, which will be very exciting. And what's more. There's more, I hear you cry. There is. Look! Very exciting because this is oak. 5mm thick or 4mm thick oak, which I've never cut before. A very nice gentleman asked me if I could cut out some gears, just a sort of range of gears, because he makes amazing scenic models. And he wanted some uh, gears cut out of this. So I said, certainly, it will be my pleasure. Found virtually no experimentation that it was 40% as always power of the laser at 3 millimeters a second and it cut beautifully I really didn't know what to expect but look lovely and I'm going to send back the offcuts because they may be of some use and what I'm doing now is about to cut out a load of these little twiddly bits which form the top of some oak cupboard doors that he is making and obviously it's one thing to cut the straight bits that go around the sides and the bottom but trying to cut this out with a scalpel or something or a Hegner or something would be very difficult. After much umming and ahhing, an hour and a half's worth of umming and ahhing, I've ended up deciding to use this the LED classic LED warm white LED strip soft adhesive and there we have it glued onto a piece of 3mm acrylic and the glue is 3M it's really good quality because it's made to last now to connect this up I have drilled zoink, two 1mm holes through the two solder pads which I'm going to stick wires through from the back how lovely. The great thing about this, absolutely fantastic, I know I've been on and on about this LED strip so many times, but it is a godsend. Yeah, the fact is you can cut it into sections of three, because each section of three is 12 volts. Each one of these shares the 12 volts plus one resistor to limit the current to all three. It's amazing, so you can cut it into any length you want. It's flexible, it's bendable, it's Brilliant. And there we are, wires soldered through and some nice hot melt glue just to reinforce them so they don't snap off and can move around a bit. There's the steampunk time zone clock for Erin the American truck driver's cab, all packaged up, double boxed with lots of void fill around it in case it gets dropped or whatever. That's great. I've got the um, D mat lever for the TARDIS, the steampunk TARDIS, are ready to go. And I'm cutting out stuff again. This time, 10mm acrylic, even more efficiently, because I'm starting to make another of 20 this time of the ready-made chronograph clocks. Terribly, terribly exciting. It is amazing how, because this is number, this is going to be, I think I started at 52 or something, so I've only 52 of them so far, including the kits. But every time I make them, I make improvements. In the past, I was cutting out, for example, the top and bottom of the pendulum, the mercury compensated pendulum, not real mercury, I hasten to add, um, a shiny aluminium film. But I was getting the laser cutter, as is this first experiment, to engrave down. I'd worked out the power necessary and got it to draw loads and loads of parallel lines, 0.1 millimetres apart, to engrave halfway through, as you can see, both at the ends for the metal rods and for the acrylic tube in the centre. But it was taking ages and also I subsequently decided that I had to drill them all out again with a proper drill bit because 
it just wasn't quite accurate enough. It wasn't predictable enough because of slight differences in the quality or structure of the plastic, the acrylic. It always varies. Sometimes the rods would push in, sometimes they wouldn't. So uh, it builds a lovely jig. To say, one of my favourites, into which these bits would drop. Clamp it down. That gives you something nice and large to hold onto while you drill out the bits. 12 millimetres, I think, in the middle again, and 3.3 in the sides. Then this time I thought, why on earth bother? I've got a lovely jig to cl clamp it down, so gripping it isn't a problem. Why am I wasting so much time with a laser cutter? cutting out and engraving so much. So this time I've got it to engrave two millimeter pilot holes, or yeah, pilot holes, just down where I'm going to use the proper size drill bit. It's, things like that are so exciting. So you can see while it's been doing it, you can see with that one, they're not big holes, there's no engraved holes, there's the cut holes, but I'll be able to put that in the jig and then cut it out. And that just saves so much time. This really demonstrates my love of laser cutters and things. Here we are, another front of a clock, number 62, each one individually numbered. As well as cutting out all this, it's also engraved the lettering and the little lines. Absolutely fantastic. That, look at that. Isn't that incredible? The precision. I know that's absolutely square. These started off like a jigsaw puzzle but they were taking up too much room and because I wanted to fit it really efficiently onto a sheet, each sheet of ply, um, making them square saved a lot of space and meant they would sort of um, tessellate. Look at that. So you don't, I don't even bother putting any glue on those bits because once I've got that I then glue that, make up the next one, glue that on there and then glue the top on and put it under a nice heavy weight. It's very enjoyable and lovely. And on top of that, let's talk shell lamps. Those wonderful lamp shows that we used in front of gas lamps and things in Victorian theatres. They're just so, they just so epitomise that sort of look, a row of footlights. I wanted to use one for my Is It Time for Tea machine? And I couldn't find anyone who would sell little ones. And after lots of humming and ahhing, I got into photogrammetry, which is absolutely incredible. This is why this isn't the original brass. This is a proper antique one that I bought. And I sprayed it with speckle paint and then took 50 photographs of it from all different angles, fed them into the computer, into the most amazing software, photogrammetry software, which worked out where I'd taken each one from, how they all fitted together, and created um, an STL file, a 3D model file from that. It is it's mind blowing. So if you want an example, the application of mathematics, it's, that's a brilliant one. So I could then shrink that down, add bits and pieces, which is why this is one of the ones that I developed for use with the Is It Time for Team machine. It's lovely. It's got a one watt warm white LED in it. And I thought, well, I've made these, why not sell them? Because I had some interest from people asking, where did you get them? So I started selling them and then got a bit bored and took them off because there wasn't much interest. And now recently several people have been asking about them. So with renewed vigour, because they need a resistor in series with the 1 watt LED and I was suggesting you can wire them up with something or other. But I realised that I could add a little extra bump there, move all this up a bit, add a bump so the resistor can actually be fixed in, soldered in by me as I'll build all this. And that'll be brilliant, it'll be protected, any warmth will just be able to dissipate, any heat dissipate. So I'm printing one of these out. Here it is. So that's point 0.06. So rather than taking one and a half hours to print, it's going to take five and a half hours, but that's fine. All the little squares in the centre are to support it, because I'm printing it sort of hollow side down. So that's just a support um, system which you snap out afterwards. So I'm printing it at 0.06 and I'm printing it in brass fibre, which I didn't have when I did the original ones. That's very exciting. So I can't wait, I will keep you posted. So far, it has been going, I can't read that through there, 1 hour 58 and it's done 30% nearly. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then what I'm going to do is to put, make a, take some new photographs, put a new advert together and possibly even add it to my Etsy shop as well. 
so that it's available to more people. And because it's scanned in, I can, if someone wants one a certain size, I can print it that size, which is even more exciting. Fabulous. I have to say, it does look rather beautiful. And printing in the brass filament really does give it such a lovely deep shine. So, and there's the raft. So what I'm going to do is peel this off. Like so. Now the raft is printed solidly on the base to make everything stick. And then very, very thinly between... Oh, look at that. You can see how thinly. I'm cracking an egg with one hand. So there's the raft. Amazing. And there's the in, inner support structure that I asked it to print because I needed obviously the inside of this shell to be supported. And this just comes away. I'm going to get a pair of pliers and pick that out and I'll get back to you. Look what arrived. Another exciting thing. I couldn't believe that you can get stepper motors this small. They weigh 1.7 grams or something. Absolutely crazy. But I suppose they're for little miniature flying machines such as drones and helicopters. But my idea, and thank you to someone on Etsy, I think it was, who said, do you sell these gauges with servo motors in? And I said, no, I don't, but that's a very exciting idea. So I've been thinking about it because I've often thought how lovely it would be to be able to use one of these as a proper working gauge. Because at the moment you put the electricity in and it moves backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. But what I've thought is I could fit this servo motor underneath this gear with a crank on. That serves two purposes. One, it will allow this to move very precisely to a specific point on a scale that can then be redesigned. And also it means that if the servo motor overshoots either right or left, goes too far, it's not going to damage this. It's not going to wrench that straight over and crash it into the side and snap it. It's just going to move it back a little bit which means you can then set up the exact position you want with something like an Arduino, whatever. If I make the outside of this gear slightly smaller on this particular version, then that's not going to engage in that gear, which means these two can carry on being driven by the little motor, which will be lovely because that will be spinning all the time so it look like things are happening and going on. And then the pointer will move independently with a servo motor. It's done. Look! We've got the 1 watt LED sitting on its heat sink and now we've got the 12 ohm resistor which limits the 5 volt supply enough to not burn out the uh, LED and it does look lovely. All screws together. Look at that beauty. Now let's switch it on and see what happens. Da, da, da. Look at that. Perfect, lovely warm white. Like I said before, cool white just doesn't look right with steampunk because you've got the warmth of the wood and the brass and you light it with this really cold, harsh white light and it just doesn't look right, whereas that is lovely. And of course, I forgot to add that if you connect these to the interface to an Arduino or something like that, Raspberry Pi, you can then get them to fade up and down as required to illuminate your lovely steampunk invention. What a pain. Oh, I've just learnt another thing, useful thing. Don't be too clever. I'd arranged all these gears, which I cut out before for the chronographs, and I thought to myself, let's be really clever and cram even more onto the sheets of plastic, 3mm acrylic, and then left it, got on with staining, mmm, staining beautiful chronograph bases. Two and a half hours later, I decided to go and check on it, and the plastic has warped really badly. It's, it's standing up at the edges by about a centimetre. Absolutely ridiculous. All I can assume, having cut out all these bits before, spread out a bit, is there wasn't enough plastic left to keep the sheet rigid, and with all the heating and cooling, it all distorted. I can't even, it bent up so much, I can't even get these gears out. And if you do get them out, the backs of all the teeth are all sort of solid plastic. Useless. How frustrating. But, as I say, live and learn. Yes. As always, nothing's wasted. This can all go in the exciting box. 
when that's full I'll let people know on the videos or whatever so that someone can pay for the postage and I'll send the lot to them. Here's today's one, the original one, before I packed them all together. This, I'm, I'm trying to make 20 and this has got, I don't know how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's got 16, 16 complete sets of the 3mm things and I thought I'd be very clever and cram on all 20. But dear friends, don't try this at home. It just leads to unhappiness and frustration. So I'm keeping a beady eye on this throughout the whole process to check and also tape down the edges, which I've never bothered to do it before, just to make sure it doesn't whoop. There's also another super improved shell lamp being printed. This time I've cut off the little bit at the bottom so it lies flat, which really speeds up the printing time and makes a better quality print, I think. How much do I hate this clock? A lot. Lots and lots, because it still doesn't work. Because I've now I've found out why one of these, this little rat pool or whatever, the ratchet's pool, gets stuck because it now lines up with the snorkel. Just for pity's sake. But after the bit of market research I did regarding this weight, I'm moving it over here, which I did like, and everyone sort of the majority of people voted for it, so it's off to one side. That's nice, and look, someone suggested, wouldn't it be nice? Ooh if there was a glass tube for the weight to go up and down in. Look at that, a glass tube for the weight to go up and down in. Also the benefit of that, because I remember sometime trying to slow this down as it shoots back, this will do that because if I make a nice little brass weight that fits in here just fairly tightly, as it shoots back, uh, the air pressure will have to escape so it'll slow it down and it'll look lovely sitting on the side. So that's another thing. Isn't that amazing? It's finished cutting and there's no distortion. I didn't even have to have stuck it down. It's amazing. Just that extra little bit of plastic around everything supported it and kept it flat. Thanks very much for watching this strange concoction of different projects all coming together. Thanks again. Please remember if you like this sort of thing please click subscribe and the bell to let you know when the next one's available. Thanks again.